Hello everyone, welcome to ECMATH. Today we're going to talk about partial fraction decomposition. Before we can decompose fractions, we have to compose some fractions. So let's uh, recall what we had to do if we were adding fractions uh, of rational numbers. That is, we have things like uh, numbers over fractions of x, x minus 3, x plus 1, x plus 1 to the second power, uh, etc. So we're going to do a problem like this. I'm actually going to work it out down here. I've given myself some nice space in between the variables. So the first thing, whenever I was doing this, that I'd have to do is find, uh, think of what my common denominator would be. So my target denominator would be something like uh, an x minus 3, because I see that in the first term. But I would also need an x plus 1, because I see that in the second term. Uh, and I might look at this last term and think that I also need an x plus 1 quantity squared, but that would of course be too much uh, x plus 1, that's unnecessary. In fact, I can group these together because they both have a factor of x plus 1 and just make a common denominator uh, of, that includes an x plus 1 to the second power. So that's what I'm going to try to go for. How do I get it? Well, I need to multiply each of these terms by whatever's missing. I'm looking at my target and I'm thinking about whatever's missing. So for example, uh, 5x minus 3, I need to multiply by x plus 1 squared over x plus 1 squared. Uh, meanwhile, ooh, excuse me. Meanwhile, this term right here, 3 over x plus 1, uh, it needs an x minus 3 and an x minus 3, but it also needs an x plus 1 and an x plus 1 to kind of complete the set and get that x plus 1 squared going on. And finally, an x plus 1 quantity squared. What is that going to need? That's going to need an x minus 3 and an x minus 3. Um, and then we can really just kind of... Uh, denominators are all going to now be the same, right? These are all the same. That was our goal. So those are all going to go become the denominator. But we have to do a little bit of work to figure out what goes up in the numerator. So here's how that shakes out. So that's just the sum of everything that would be in the numerators, and then you would take that and bring it on top of the fraction, and you've successfully added those fractions up. Now if you look at the structure of how these were broken up, you'll notice that on top of each fraction, there was a single constant. So like this, you could consider a constant, maybe call it A. Over here, you can consider this a constant, maybe call it B. And over here, you could consider this a constant, maybe call it C. And notice that all three of those constants, A, B, and C, were different. Well, what if, what if we gave you the fraction already built together? Then what you might want to do is take it and split it into multiple component fractions. There's a lot of reasons you might do this. One of them is in calculus. Uh, this thing is no thank you. It's not very fun to work with, especially when you get something like that x squared on the bottom, right? If these were multiplied together. Uh, but it's a lot easier to split it up into things where you have just a single x in each term, right? Looking at how nice like this term was, we had a single x just on the bottom. You're going to be a lot happier if you can do that uh, than if you have uh, x's all over the place on the top and the bottom of the fraction. So here's how you set up something like this. Uh, first, if you haven't already, factor the bottom. 
This one, thank you, already came to us factored, so we're not going to try to factor it again. Um, then, what you're going to do is take each of the factors from the bottom and write them underneath one fraction bar. So I have an x, sorry, that's an x minus 2, and then an x plus 1, kind of written uh, separately like that. Now, what you're going to do is on the top of the fractions, we're going to figure out what constants go there. Now, I don't know what constant's going to go here, so I'm just going to call it A. I don't know what constant's going to go on top of this one, so I'm just going to call it B. Uh, now, these names are arbitrary. You could use any letter you want. Uh, the order here is arbitrary. I could have put those in a different order, and it wouldn't have really affected anything, except maybe which thing ends up as A and B, but the final answer won't really change. So now we've basically created something that is an equation. We have x, a, and b, and we need to solve for both. Um, and then the hardest part of this is actually computing that and completing that solving process. There's a couple ways to think about the next step, which is going to be to get rid of these fractions and get us into something that's in a single line. But uh, the easiest way to think about it is that you're going to take this entire expression and multiply it by everything that ever appears on the bottom of a fraction. That's going to be that trick that just immediately clears out all the fractions in the world. So, for example, if I multiply this by x minus 2 and multiply it by x plus 1, when the x minus 2 goes to all three terms, it will cancel out of two of them, and then it will have to go to the third term. And when the x plus 1 goes to all three terms, it will also cancel out of two of them, but it will have to go to the third term. So let's actually do that. Uh, so if I bring that in, all of the denominators here will cancel out. And I'll get the expression 5, ooh, excuse me, 5x minus 1 equals a times, now I multiplied by x minus 2 and that canceled out, but I multiplied by x plus 1 and that didn't cancel out. So I'm going to have an a times x plus 1. And then that's added to b times, well, when I brought that x minus 2 in, uh, that did not cancel. And the x plus 1 did cancel. So we have 5x minus 1 equals a parentheses x plus 1 plus b parentheses x minus 2. And it's the same equivalent expression. We just cleared out all the denominators. All right. I've given myself two copies of this expression because there's actually two ways to solve this. The first way is going to involve what we call equating coefficients. Uh, and the way this works is you have to multiply everything out. So we have ax plus a plus bx minus 2b. And then we group all the terms with x and group all the terms without x. So ax plus bx plus a minus 2b. And I'll write this 5x minus 1 here. <laughs> Now what I'm going to do with the x terms is factor that x out and write this as a plus b quantity x plus a minus 2b. Now I put those parentheses there because I'm trying to show you something very important. This method is called the method of equating coefficients. So can you see what you might want to do? If these expressions are really equal, well, equal means equal. So 5x has to be exactly the same as a plus bx, which means that 5 must equal a plus b. Also, negative 1, that is the terms with no x's, or the x, the constant terms, have to also be equal. So the terms with x have to have equal coefficients of 5 and a plus b on the left and right. And the constant terms also have to have equal coefficients of negative 1 and a minus 2b. Now, I've written them down here uh, because I want you to notice that we've now created a system of equations.
that you can solve with any method that you love for solving systems of equations. Uh, this one looks like a really nice one to solve with elimination. Uh, so for example, if I subtract this entire equation just straight down, so this will give me 6 equals 0a plus 3b, uh, which means that 2 would have to equal b. And since 5 was equal to a plus b and b was equal to 2, then 3 had to be equal to a. So just solving that system backwards in any way you know how. Uh, and that would mean that if I were to go back to the very original problem and get rid of all these weird little arrows, I could take that a value, cross it out, and replace that with the number 3. Whoa, there. Just write a 3. And I could take that b value and cross it out and replace it with the number 2. And if I were to add these two fractions back up using the method we showed at the start of the video, then I would hopefully get 5x minus 1. Okay, I want to show you a second way to solve this equation that uh, is, I think, a little cooler. Now, we have this weird situation where we have um, one equation and three kind of variables and unknowns. But remember that x is not a variable like we're trying to solve for. x is x. Uh, so x kind of represents any real number. Uh, so it's not something we're trying to solve for. But if this equation has to be true for any real number, what that means is that I can pick an x. And specifically, I can pick a smart x. So I don't think this method has like a name. Uh, I've never seen a, a fancy name for it. I just call it the method of choosing smart x's. Um, now there's two smart x's that I might choose here. One might be uh, x equals negative one, and the other might be x equals positive two. The reason I'm choosing both of these is they make something equal to zero. And I don't really have a preference. Uh, I guess in the problem on the left, I solve for b first. So I'm going to try to solve for a first by eliminating b. Uh, so if I plug in, oh, there, too far. If I plug in x equals 2, I know that that's going to let me eliminate b because that's going to become a 0. So let's try it. 5 times 2 minus 1 equals a times 2 minus 1 plus b times 2 minus 2. Let's simplify that. 9 equals a plus... So 9 equals a. Did anyone spot the error I just made? I had to pause the video and look for it myself. I'm not going to cut this video right here. I'm actually going to keep that error because it shows one of the flaws in this method, um, or really any method. You still have to be careful even when you're solving a system. Uh, so it turns out that a is not equal to 9 in any way, uh, because when you do 2 plus 1, which was my error, right? So I had x minus 1, that doesn't magically become a minus. We get that 9 should equal 3a plus 0b. So 3 should equal a. And if we know that 3 is equal to a, we also know uh, we can then substitute in and say, for example, um, well, actually, let's go back and substitute in the other x. Let's substitute in uh, negative 1. So we know that 5 times negative 1 equals a times negative 1 plus 1 plus b times negative 1 minus 2. So we get 4 equals a times 0 plus b times minus 3. Uh, I have again screwed up somewhere. Where did I screw up? 5 times negative 1 minus 1 should give me minus 6. So minus 6 is equal to negative 3b and 2 would have to be b. 
Um, once I know that a is 3, I can also go back and substitute into the idea that a plus b had to be 5 from the other side. But I just wanted to show you how uh, the equating coefficients method can solve for both variables. So again, once you're in here, you're kind of just using anything you know to solve the system, using all the tools at, in your mathematical toolkit, everything you have available. Um, now that's basically the setup for solving these. Uh, sometimes, of course, you have many, many factors. Um, what I'm gonna do is cut the video right here because we've gone on long enough. I'm gonna start a second video that shows you some of these more advanced techniques.